Myself, David Goldstrom, our second visit on day one to the World Weightlifting Championships here in Doha, the capital of Qatar. And coming up in a very few minutes from now, the opening men's championship category, 56 kilos. That should mean Halil Mutlu, but for those of you who haven't perhaps kept abreast of everything, no Halil Mutlu. I'm afraid the Olympic and world champion has been a naughty boy, disqualified for two years for taking an illegal substance, uh, Nandrolone in his case, and so therefore for uh, the title, a much more open affair in this uh, men's 60, 56 kilo competition. These are the contenders, just one from Europe, that's Eric Bonnell, right at the top, seven from Asia, and uh, two from South America, from uh, Colombia, including uh, Nelson Castro, four from the top of the list there, the reigning Pan American champion. Well, David, an interesting uh, situation, 56 kilos, uh, and it does, uh, as you see, Mutlu's uh, statistics there mean that this is this is quite an interesting challenge. Well, that's right. It's disappointing that Mutlu's not around, so it's unlikely that we're going to see any uh, world records. But uh, on the upside, we are going to see one or two very, very good battles for for medals. And straight away, starting off with uh, Sergio Rada one of the uh, two Colombians. Incidentally, we've actually got a 16-year-old athlete uh, in this lineup, which is uh, unusual at this level. More of him when we see him. This young man is only 21, uh, one of three lifters today in the A finals, uh, celebrating his birthday on the 1st of January. Bronze medal recently in the Junior World Championships. And a good enough start. Yes, good clean opener. And of course, those of you joining us for the first time, let me emphasize that these are the first senior world championships at which the one kilo rule is being introduced. No longer the minimum increase being two and a half kilos. It's uh, one kilo, which makes the whole uh, battle, particularly at these lighter weights, a lot more interesting, a lot more tactical, and the body weights arguably a lot less relevant. Yes, and of course, these athletes all weighing under 56 kilos, or 56 kilos or un and, and under, which is 8 stone 11. So all of these men are under 9 stone. Well, here's a familiar face, Eric Bonnell for France. Just about the oldest man in the class, very experienced, 31 years of age, didn't get a total in Athens. That was a huge disappointment to him. Um, he's been, uh, in recent times, fifth in Europe at 107 kilos for his uh, opening weight. Heyday, I have to say, for Eric, really about five years ago when in the European Championships uh, snatched 118 kilos, which remains his personal best. Well, it would have been 117 and a half then, because of course we didn't have the new kilo rule. But that was good, so 107 kilos. Good lift. Sergio Rada opened up on 105. 105. Bonnell, always tough to compete at World Championship level in Vancouver a couple of years ago, just before the Athens Games, uh, outside the top 10, totaled up 255. But a terrific servant to French weightlifting, France who hosted the World University Championships last season. Mr. Bourguides, the president of the French Federation, hoping that in the near future that he can host the Senior European Championships. So the Pan American champion, Nelson Castro, with 110 kilos now on the bar.
Yes, so almost approaching double body weight at this very, very early stage of the competition. Yeah, he's really uh, graduating into the senior ranks. He competed in Athens in the B division of the Olympic Games and uh, snatched 117 and a half kilos, which is exactly what he did in winning the Pan American title. So, a promising South American. But on that evidence, starting well within himself. Well, for me, it wasn't the most convincing lift. The arms were a bit soft. But it's a start. Well, let's wait and see whether, having got one on the board, things sharpen up and he produces a, an increasing level of performance there. I always find this very interesting, David, when you look at the different lifters in the competition, the different attitude. Here comes a man who sort of just looks a bit more bouncy, a bit more sprightly. And uh, that's youth for you, because here is the 16-year-old, Beruzi for Iran. So a nice reception for him. Sajed or Sayed, I hope I've pronounced that, or Sayed, I should say. Hopefully I've pronounced it wrong. Right, if I haven't, send me an email and uh, help me out. 110 kilos. Oh, very impressive. Yeah, and that's right on his uh, personal best from uh, Dubai at the uh, end of September, the Asian Championships. Very, very quick under the bar. And of course, David, uh, Iran or Iranian weightlifting headlined by the uh, the big man, Reza Zadeh, who we all think is capable of 500 kilos. <laughs> well, I think time, I think time will tell on that one. The interesting question is, when would he go for that? Would he go for these championships? He certainly entered in the super heavyweight class. I guess we're all hoping that that day comes when he's, you know, fit and full of himself, that he really, really is prepared to push himself because that's what it's about at the moment. There isn't anybody out there to push him. No lift. So, Rada got 105, but struggling with 110. And his 110 compares with uh, Li Zhang of China, who's proposed an opening uh, weight of 122. Likewise, uh, Wang Xingwan of uh, Taipei and also Yang Xinyi of uh, Taipei. So those three men together with Wu Meiyin of China. So two Chinese lifters, two Taipei lifters, and they're all proposing to open up within two kilos of each other. So that promises to be quite fascinating. Now, I think he's going to follow himself here, Rada. So he's got two minutes. Yes, I think he's got the strength. He, he pulled the bar to arm's length. He's just, it's just about technique. I think the trouble is when when the when the weight gets heavy, you tend to lean your body back at right at the right at the top of the pull, which puts a bit of backward momentum on the bar. And he's, on this one, he's got to do exactly what he did last time, but he's got to he's got to stand up rather than leaning back at the top. So, third and final attempt for Sergio Rada. Important mark for him. Better. Yes, did everything right. Good 
Just underlining that weightlifting isn't just about being strong enough, it's about focus, concentration. I must say the most important thing is of course to get the technical aspects of the stage presentation uh, correct as you see Eric Bonnell coming out for his second attempt four kilos up at uh, 111 but uh, I have to say I've seen smarter present presented stages in my life <laughs> it looks a little bit more like a club weightlifting venue rather than a world championship venue it's quite basic that won't be worrying uh, Eric Bonnell. Four, three, two, one, zero. Stop the movements. So, Garusha of Moldavia to open up on 112. You go go brush up. Well, that's a couple of kilos more than he achieved in the Europeans in which he finished sixth last spring. But didn't gain enough height on the bar. I was trying to uh, to fix it overhead. He's a lifter he stood who's, up. Sorry, David. I was going to say he's a lifter who's fluctuated a little bit between 56 and 62 kilos. So he's down in the lower weight category again now. <laughs> Of course, that's one of the problems that we that we discussed earlier. When 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 reducing, it's up to the the coach to decide what the athlete should start on. And I think that when you've come down from a heavier body weight class, you should certainly err on the side of caution and use your three attempts to build. Bonnell, uh, by virtue of that one kilo at the moment in the lead although he weighed in pretty heavy 55.91 there is no one heavier than him amongst the 10 that are vying for honours tonight Dr Ian prowling around the secretariat having a little chat with Attila their computer expert <laughs> That's better. Again, un un underlining that it's, it's, it's concentration. He wasted that first attempt because he wasn't focused. He didn't stand up with his pull before going under. Rushed it. Yeah, and he is uh, one of the lighter men. In fact, at 55-37, uh, there is uh, nobody lighter. But a long way to go. Bonnell coming out for his third and final lift. It, 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 interesting, David. I mean, a lot of lifters, you know, you want to go for the big prizes, the Olympic Games, the World Championships. Bonnell's known for a long time that that's always going to be, you know, outside his compass. So what keeps driving you? Well, I think he's, I mean, he's, he's got a chance of, of, of a medal, medals in European Championships. And, you know, you don't have to be the... Uh, the best to enjoy the sport. I mean, he's still in. He's still. He still competes in the in the A final in most championships. And maybe he just just loves just loves the sport. I mean, somebody said to me once, why, uh, you know, why have you competed in six Commonwealth Games? You know, there's there's you know, you're not earning 
millions of pounds. And I said, well, I actually enjoy the sport, which is a, you know, which is a concept that uh, I hope many many youngsters will have, as opposed to just getting involved in things just you know purely for the for the monetary benefit. Not that there's any particular monetary benefit in weightlifting. <laughs> Well, it depends where you live. <laughs> if you're uh, in Qatar, if you're Greek, <laughs> or in Qatar, I remember it was uh, not so many years ago that Qatar invested a million dollars in uh, a whole bunch of Bulgarian lifters. <laughs> now, what sort of day would this chap have had, uh, David? I mean, here we are coming in for the evening. So, how would he have prepared for this day? Well. All of these athletes would have, would have, would have, will almost certainly be training at two or three kilos overweight. So he will have had a day of uh, probably eating and drinking nothing, sitting in the sauna before the weigh-in. So pretty, pretty miserable <laughs> actually. And it's not a pretty happy evening either for him at the moment. Yes, weightlifting athletes have to weigh in two hours before the start of the competition so during that period they have a chance to um, to have a drink something to eat I suppose the uh, the only comfort is in a sense that at least uh, they're not being obliged the those who are in the A finals and the medal finals tend to lift later in the day so you don't have to get up so ridiculously early no, but when something of a help. Well, kind of, but um, but sometimes it's good to uh, to weigh in early when you've when you've had to make weight because it's much nicer to kind of go to bed, get up, make the weight, and then be able to eat rather than having to kind of sit around all all day. Well, plenty of support for uh, yeah. this young man, and uh, looking for a five kilo increase. So can he do it? Yes, what's striking about this lifter is that, uh, well, obviously he's, 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 he's youth, but he uh, very, very quick under the bar, very fast under the bar. Yeah, well down in the world rankings, but you would expect that, but very good. At the moment, he's, be he's belying the 27th place that he's got in the world rankings. Excellent. Well, you, you, I mean, this, you know, this is the time between now and 20 where he's going to make, make substantial gains. But he's so quick under the bar. Which of course is, is an advantage. You could have two athletes that can pull the weight to the same height, but if you've got somebody like him who is so fast, he gets under it before it starts travelling down again. Whereas you could have somebody who isn't quite as quick, wouldn't be able to lift as much weight. So there's so many different factors involved in in in, in, in the weight that you actually lift, and being strong enough to pull the weight high high enough isn't isn't the only one. As we've already seen, concentration plays play, plays a big role as well as well as speed under the bar. So Castro had that 115 failing. So pressure on now. And again correcting after failure. So so again a, a, a wasted attempt. If he'd focused and, and, and done it right the first time he'd have a chance to add another kilo or two to the bar. The 16-year-old, um, I, I think I incorrectly said that Eric Bonnell was the heaviest, but actually, uh, ironically, the uh, the youngest is also the heaviest at 55.95. So you can anticipate, David, that uh, he's not only going to get stronger and lift more weight, but he's also going to be moving up the categories. You sense that he might uh, find his place around 62 kilos? I would think heavier. I, I, I would think six, 69 to 77 because he's tall. He's, yeah. he's, 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 a, he's a tall athlete. Well, still the the big guns to start. This is the hors d'oeuvre, the main course yet to uh, arrive on the table, so to speak. With no disrespect to uh, these lifters. Now, made a mess of the first one did it properly the second time so five kilos on the bar to 117 now for uh, Igor Grabrusha of Moldavia not today one out of three is I'm afraid just not good enough
say David he's come down from a heavier a heavier body weight class and I think he's making the mistake of thinking that he can lift the same weights which of course he can't the 112 kilos it's pretty modest stuff when you consider that the big guns are going to open up on 10 kilos more than he's finishing on but well It'd be very interesting to watch how this young man's career progresses over the next two to three years. Could easily find himself in the Olympic Games in Beijing. Well, I would think that with with, the, with these lifts, he would he would be in in the medals at Junior World Championships. I can't remember offhand what actually won the Junior World Championships this year, but I, but I, I, I would have. Thought this would have been in the top, in the top three, a snatch of 117. Ah, oh, well, it was great up to that point. But still got a 115 in the um, in the Asian Championships. Wang and Yang of Taipei. While well, they were snatching 100 and Wang 125 and 118. Try and check out those uh, Junior World Championships. Wu Mei Jin in the World University uh, Championships this year, uh, 120 kilos. But the um, the juniors were in Busan, so I'll try and check on that for you in a second. First appearance for the uh, Korean. This is Lee Yong Hoon. And Lee Yong Hoon was the bronze medalist in the Junior World Championships this year in uh, Busan and snatched 121 kilos. Uh, the silver went to uh, Huang of Vietnam with 123 and actually Chen of China um, well he was the gold medalist overall but an incredibly strong clean and jerk of 156 which helped him to uh, those medals so our young man from Iran not far away another year he's got four years as a yeah. as a junior so uh, but I think uh, I think it'll probably be as a as a 63 or a or a 69er, 62 or a 69er. Yeah. So rather a lot of red there. But Beruzi from Iran, two out of 315 uh, kilos. Uh, Lee of uh, Korea, 55 kilos, 88. So at the heavy end of the scale. And this is the first of the two men from Taipei. This is Yang Chin Yi. And 120 kilos on the bar for Yang. So things about to get uh, serious now. He's 24. Failed to get a total in the Olympics in Athens. Having said that, if you go back to Warsaw, the World Championships in 2002, he was the silver medalist and snatched 125 kilos on that occasion. More recently, 124 kilos, that was in Macau in the um, East Asian Championships. Yes, yeah, so this would, this would be a, a sensible starter. Absolutely. I coach looks a bit disinterested. <laughs> Is that textbook coaching? <laughs> it was almost one of those comments like, don't look at me. I mean, you. <laughs> well, if he was looking for inspiration and help, he didn't. He just got really, um, in a sense, told to get on with it. <laughs> 
is currently ranked seventh in the world. But in this year's so Yang uh, Chinyi, third ranking in the uh, IWF rankings coming into these uh, world championships. Well, I might just uh, have a quick revision of that. Uh, Yang actually now down to seventh, my apologies. When I last looked, but the um, official rankings only arrived this morning, so uh, um, they've now corrected him to seventh place as a result of his efforts in Dubai. So this time, he can't afford to make a mistake. Not if he wants to be going for significant honours, David. He's got to get this in. Well, it's not convincing, and were the legs in line, I'd like to see that from the side. That was a good lift, but he just—he doesn't seem—he's not—he's uh, not on fire, is he? He's not—he he's not, uh, doesn't seem to have woken up yet. Yeah, just uh, those those feet looked. Uh, well, he wouldn't—he wouldn't get the. Uh, you have two referees have to agree yeah. that the feet are in line before they before they press their little button and, and uh, the buzzer sounds. So. So that was the 120. Coach, uh, <laughs> I don't think I like him coaching me. I mean, just, is that <laughs> like a like a little bit of help from your friends, really, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, he's got a difficult moment now because. Obviously, he would have hoped and expected to have got that 120 and then to have moved on and uh, he's got a decision whether he actually ups it and if he does by how much and I think he's got to think in sensible terms of the overall game. So two Chinese athletes, Wu Meijin and Li Zheng both real strong contenders. Uh, Wu Meijin for uh, China. Fourth in the world rankings as a result of his success in the student games. That was back in July in Villeneuve in uh, France when he snatched 120, 155 for a 275 total. So you would expect him to come here ready to do a lot more than that. Well, that's the opening performance of the Olympic silver medalist and the defending world champion. In fact, the world champion in 2002 and the world champion in 2003. 25 years of age, so really, at, in a sense, David, right at the height of his powers. Steve Cannon lurking there as the uh, technical controller or guardian of the warm-up room. Now the other man from uh, Taipei, Wang Xin Huen, 29 years of age. Uh, like his teammate actually also failed to total in the Olympic Games in Athens, the last really big competition for all of these men. Oh, that's better. Asian Championships recently opened up with a 125, went 151 for a 276 total. So, could this be the man of the night?
really a man coming back to form. Won the Asian Championships back in 2000 in Osaka. And uh, he was snatching 125 kilos then. And that was a 125 opener? No, that was 122. 122 for Wang. So, second of the Chinese athletes, Yang. With 122. Two. Okay. Or not, as the case may be. And that was the third and final attempt, so it leaves him on one twenty. No, no, that was his. That was his opener. Was that? His? That was his opener. Yeah, that's the second of the of the, uh, the Chinese. Second of the Chinese, not the second of the Taipei lifters. Sorry, that was Li Zheng on one twenty two. Li Zheng, junior world champion in Minsk in 2004 and uh, also the junior world record holder in the snatch at 130 and a half kilos. Got to follow himself. Well, have a little drink of orange and uh, get back out there and do it. So again, just to remind you, these men are weighing under nine stone and the weight on the bar, 122 kilos. So this is, this is well over double body weight. About 10 kilos over double body weight. He thinks, he thinks, and all the uh, Chinese coaches that that was an unexpected hiccup. The first failure. But a life given away, really. In a little battle amongst the uh, equipment manufacturers, Yusaka bars, Elyco weights, I'm quite confused really. <laughs> now, 123 for the Korean. Well, interesting, this five kilo increase, which even at, at this level is, is a reasonable question to ask yourself. <laughs> He's got one more chance to try and find the answer. I think there's a sense amongst these men, the two men from Taipei and the Chinese and the Korean, that this is all quite tight and close and they know that there's a title up for grabs here. Maybe just a little bit of nervousness. Maybe they're just pushing the ball, man. Maybe yeah. they're perhaps taking you know, a kilo or two more than what they, they should. Yeah. And as you say, it's quite a big jump. Perhaps he should have gone and stayed with the others at 122, and then he still had a third attempt. But there you go, it's all part of the game. You have to make the right decisions, you have to be focused when you go on the platform. Mustn't get emotional. And it's also important that your coaching team is actually reading the signs of the other camp. They've got to be aware of how the warm-up's gone for the other athletes. Do they really look strong? Are they having a good day? Is there any chink, any sort of little sign of weakness that they can detect that might say, okay, I was going for 125, but I don't need to. I'll go 122. And that's, it's all part and parcel of why it's one man that does the job or one woman that does the job when you're out on stage, but it's a team effort up to the point that you walk up those steps and onto the stage to take that weight and put it in the air. I think he's a little bit up against it now because the problem for him is that if he fails, he's left down on 118 and that's maybe a kilo or two too far away when you think of the overall championship. Well, I'm just wondering what's happening here now. Was he going for 123 again? Must be. Sure. He, he started. He opened on 120. Well, he no, this is the China man. Oh, sorry. Um, opened on 122. Yeah. Um. Now this is the this is Wang. Uh, no, it's not. This is uh, Meijin. Wu Meijin. Yeah. 
Ah. 125. Which means that the uh, Hon must have jumped to 125 then. Yeah. Which, which, in a way, is is, is ma madness. Well, whether it is or not, we'll have to wait and see. We won't have too long to wait. Okay, on now go. But this is certainly going to put the pressure, turn the screw. This is the man who holds the championship, won the title in Vancouver. And that looks very, very heavy. So it's turning out. I mean, it's. I mean, really, it's, it's anybody's competition, isn't it, at the moment? Absolutely. There's, no, there's nobody running away with it. You would have expected that uh, this little quintet of men, two from Taipei, two from China, one from Korea, all opening around the 120, 122 mark. If that was their their aspiration, that. In fact, they would have actually performed a lot better. Now, there's a chance here for Wang with 125 on the board. Now, this is just three kilos up from his first effort. Here's the man who's beginning to get his nose in front. Not the lightest, but 125 kilos on the board. That's what matters at the moment. Two out of two. And he's in the driving seat now because he's able to watch David now, whatever the others go for. They've all got to try and lift 125. And of course, he's still got one lift remaining. Looks quite pleased with himself. It's a bit of a nearly man, uh, the Wang Xin Yuan from uh, Taipei. Fourth in the Olympics in Sydney, third in the World Championships back in Athens in 99, now 29 years of age. Could he really come back and grab a world title? Could be. Could happen. Could happen. Today could be the day. Yeah. So, failure with 120, then a success, and now a big jump. And on this occasion, proving too big, not just from a physical viewpoint, but also psychologically, just uh, pulling on that bar, realizing just how heavy it was and deciding uh, not to go underneath. So we have a situation now that we've got uh, Wang Xin, Wang Xin uh, Huen of Taipei who's got 125, Li Zheng has got 122 for China and likewise uh, Wu Mei Jin and uh, this is Li for Korea. Yes, now of course he succeeded with 117, 118. 118, failed with 123 and now he's going for broke with 125, so if he gets this he's right back into the competition, if he fails he's left down on 118 with, with quite a big deficit to make up in the clean and jerk. He's heavier than the lifter from Taipei, so it would only put him into the silver medal position in the snatch phase at this moment, but as you rightly say, it puts him back in with an overall medal chance, or a better one. Oh, oh. Well, look at that. He took the gamble. He believed in himself. Now, that's, that's uh, good communication between coach and lifter. They worked out what the problem was. It wasn't strength. It was focus, it was technique. It's good to see somebody perform under pressure and come right back into the competition like that. So right up there at the moment, Korea and Taipei.
Oh, these are crucial moments for the Chinese. So Wu Meijin. I guess this is the guy we thought being the defending champion that we had down as our favorite to win a game tonight but it's not going to be plain sailing 126 kilos just the one kilo to edge himself into first place heavier than Wang so that's the reason for that extra kilo going on Still doesn't look convincing to me. Just not there today. No. It's just too heavy. So he's left on 122, and the only person that can change things now, from China anyway, is his teammate. Who yeah, has one attempt left. <laughs> So at the moment, you have to say that the uh, Chinese haven't really quite worked this out. And remember also that Wang, whatever happens, whatever Li Zheng does, Wang has still got one more lift. There it is. Two men, two lifts, quite a lot of red for failure. But one or two men, mo most notably the young 16-year-old Ben Ruzi from Iran, well, he'll have enjoyed himself so far. Well, Wang deciding to come out on 126, which I think is wise, but I thought the 125 was right on his limit, so I think this is uh, an extra kilo is probably all he could expect, and then he's just got to sit back and hope that it's enough to, to hold on to that gold medal. Well, Li Zhang weighed in at 55.49, which is lighter than Wang, so it does mean that Li Zhang only has to do 126 to go into first place. And it's not there because all he has to do now is to do, well, he, 126, he's got to do because the bar can't go down. Uh, so, Li Zheng, 21-year-old former junior world champion, the only man who can take it away from Wang at the halfway stage. So can he pick up four more kilos? If he's successful, he can take over the lead from the Vietnamese. So quite a tight competition. There was only 25 kilos. Difference between the lowest entered and the highest entered total, 260 to 285. But Li Zheng now actually going for 127. So that would suggest he's confident. Doesn't need it though. Doesn't need it, but he's done it. So there it is. 127 and China lead at the halfway stage in this men's 56 kilo world weightlifting championship Li Zheng takes the lead away from uh, Wang Xinhuan of Taipei on 125 and uh, Li of Korea heavier also on 125 but he's now in the bronze medal position and Wu Mei Jin the defending champion uh, down on 122 kilos so a spread of five kilos between the first four but Li Zheng pulling it out of the fire for the Chinese but we are as I said only at the halfway stage as you can see it's uh, quite a tight little warm-up area there not a huge amount of room but there are the facts and figures 127 so a two kilo advantage of for Lee over Wang then uh, you can see the same advantage over Lee of Korea Wu four kilos uh, sorry five kilos off the pace and then uh, Yang 
for Taipei, now seven behind. And then the 16-year-old, well, that's a pretty good performance to only to be 12 down. At this uh, stage, the Pan American champion, also on 115, Grabusha from Moldavia, Eric Bonnell and uh, Rada of uh, Colombia down in 10th place at the moment. So half the competition gone, but this is still not a runaway by any means, David.